Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we basically just set up our brand new project and installed Bolt. In this lecture, we're going to set up our user interface for the very basic start of the game. Now, before we get going into this, I want to make sure you understand we're building a business idol tycoon game, and this is modeled uh, closely off of Adventure Capitalist. So if you haven't seen Adventure Capitalist, you haven't played it before, you know, put it into Google, bring it up, at least look at the interface or watch a, a little bit of YouTube of somebody playing it so you understand the kind of game we're building. But like in any Id idle tycoon game or any tycoon game for that matter, the most important aspect is the money. So we're going to begin by having a money variable that we're going to keep and then when we click on a button, we're going to update that money variable and add one to it. Just almost like a cookie clicker type game. So it's going to allow us to get started with the basic functionality of these kind of clicker games. So let's get started. I'm going to close our wizard here. And I'm assuming that you have some Unity basics. Uh, understand the editor. So I'm not going to explain a lot about the editor. There's a, you know a thousand utilities or tutorials on that. So let's go ahead and begin setting up our user interface I do that by right clicking over here in our hierarchy and I come down to UI and I'm going to choose text so this will be the text that we'll use for our money now you can double click on text here and it zooms you right into it I'm going to click on it just to make sure I got it and let's change the color to white so it'll show up real easy and let's also make the font color or font size say 24 make it bigger and let's also center it and if we scroll out here we can see that the outline is our, our screen so we can see this outline here and um, I'm gonna bring it and just I'm right clicking and dragging to get it centered and I'm just gonna bring the text to the center top here so we just have this is where our money will be for now we can always change that later and we likely will. But this is going to be our money and I can center it make sure it's easy to see here and I'll go ahead and change this to say money so I'm not going to actually make it look like the money should look when we see it here I use a placeholder here so I know if my code is properly updating my text label if I put in say something like uh, zero dot dot to show the money like it might look when it's running then it's going to be tough for, tougher for me to know that my code's doing what it's supposed to do. So I'll just do it like that. And I also want to name our object here something smart, you know, money text. Make it something that when you look at it, you know what it's for. This is the text for the money. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and make a button too so that when we click on it, it'll update and add to our money. So I'm going to come here to UI and I'm going to choose button and let's go ahead and just move it over here because we're going to have multiple stores eventually. So this is just to get us started for beginners who really don't know anything about Bolt yet who may be new altogether to Unity for that matter. So now that we got our button out here I'm going to name it click button. So This will be the button that we click when we want to make money just like a cookie clicker or adventure capitalist for that matter you have to click when you first start and let's uh, go into the text here and say click me we can always later add a graphic to this we're working right now on the functionality and we're zoomed way out let's get in a little closer alright so when we click this we're gonna to add to this money variable makes sense right so this is really the entirety of what we're going to start with in terms of an interface because we want to at least get started making something and so you can see how this bolt works so we create a flow graph by just putting it on an object I'm going to make right click here and make a game object so right here I've made an empty game object and I'm just going to call this game manager and so this is going to hold our core variables and the things that we really need to manage the game and any main processes and states that we need to manage so game manager is going to maintain our money and um, we obviously need to add our flow machine to this and so 
when I, I already had it typed in here, but you can just type in flow and you get a flow machine. And so I click on this and we got a script here. Now we get to decide whether we want a macro source or an embedded source. Now when it's on the game manager, since there's only one of these and we'll never have multiple ones of these and we'll like as opposed to stores and perhaps other components in the game where we'd have multiple ones this one we're only gonna have one so we're fine leaving it here under embedded and we just can call this game manager so this is gonna be our main flow machine it's gonna manage the high-level states of our games and um, so we can just get right away in here by clicking edit graph and this brings up the graph and um, you're gonna wanna maybe play with what works for you how to set the graph up and I'm still not exactly sure where I really like it um, but I find myself sometimes docking it down here and let me get it where I can see by the console because I wanna dock it down here just I'm dragging it down in here to the console it's because I usually am not using the console while I'm using the graph but I find myself needing to look at the scene and look at the hierarchy uh, while I'm using the graph. And of course over here, and I didn't mean to click it like that, and actually you can hit shift space to bring it back down. Um, but when you click here, you can see over here on the right that you got variables. Now, I, one thing I really like about Bolt is it's really clear about how you use variables. And if you're brand new to programming, brand new to development it's probably not a lot you're going to appreciate in it yet but trust me when I say that this is a pretty easy system to learn as far as visually so when we have this graph on our game manager we know we want our game manager to keep track of money you know that's the most important thing in an idle game so let's come over here and let's say money and we're gonna click the plus and for our money we're gonna choose a type and uh, I'm gonna assume you know a little bit about programming but in case you don't know anything about it um, money we're gonna pick float and a float variable is a type of variable that's gonna have uh, decimal places so for example we could have our money start out at five dollars and uh, the zero cents there but we could easily just have it 525 for example or we could leave it zero but the point is we can have a decimal places in float if we used an integer we'd have to use single numbers uh, single digits but we're gonna stick with the float for now and we'll start our money out at nothing and as we click then we will make money and so we're gonna start this uh, tycoon game out a little bit like a cookie clicker where when you click you make money and the more you click then eventually you can you know upgrade in the game so we got our money there and now we want to make it so we can when the game starts at least update the money from our variable uh, to replace the label here because right now if we run our game by clicking play here obviously nothing's hooked up we just have our click me and our money and I don't see our money that's because our graph is so big down here let me get it so we can always see it okay so you can see we're not we're not uh, changing this yet so let's fix that right now in this uh, lecture so in this flow graph we're provided two units to start with so these are called units in flow graph and um, I'm going to in this start event we're gonna have this flow that comes out as you can see and we can hook it up to things and what we want to hook it up to obviously is a way to set the text for the money up there so when I click and drag and I'm just using a left click and let go it's gonna prompt me uh, to pick you know what I want to operate on or what kind of unit I want to make here and this is really powerful I really like how you find things in here and just like I said we know that this is a text object and I want to set the text so let's just type text in there and as soon as I do that we can see that we got text in here and it's like well it doesn't say anything about setting text so let's just type set and I didn't even put a space uh, when I did that and you'll notice that we have right down here text.text .text set and you'll see that what it puts down at the bottom there for our our, uh, our uh, instructions or information it says the string value this text displays and it has the target 
And so we can set this. This is a setter. So I'm going to bring this set down. And it wants to know what object we want to set. That's right now set to self. So it's kind of assuming that we want to set like the text on our on the object we're on. Well, this is just a game manager. So we need to specify instead this money text. Well, we can do that by just clicking here on that little dot and choose money text, just like that, and just double click. So now it knows that we're talking about this right here. Now let's go ahead and just test out this and put in hello world, just like that, and run. So you can see that here we have just almost a standard hello world example in which when this start event fires off, we now have a text unit here that's setting the text of money text to hello world. Well, we obviously want our money variable instead. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. If I right click, I can add a unit. And if I say set in here, Notice as soon as I say set that we get a set money here and it's just one of the things I really like about Bolt is that it's intuitive and it knows that we've been working with this money variable up here and so when I say set I can only uh, suppose that as part of their logarithm of the search that it, it says ah this might be what I'm looking for. So I click on that and um, and I, I, sh I shouldn't have said set, and I apologize for that. What I really wanted to do uh, was get the variable. Because we've already created the variable. We don't need to set it. We really need to get. So come back up here, get. And now get money's at the very top. And I'm going to just drag it over with my left mouse click. And you'll notice that if I don't you know, have it selected, that it's gray. And that means it's not hooked up. It's just not active. So we want to hook it up, and obviously we want to take the money that comes out of here, this variable, and drag it into here so that it can display it in the text. Now you'll notice something here that we have a green uh, little circle here and an orange one here. So we're, we're not the right types because money, if you remember, is a float that we created over here and text is a text object. So I'm going to run this just so you can see what happens when we make this uh, mistake, I guess is what you would call it. We get a red action here because we're trying to take a float and push it into a string. And if I come and click on the console, we can see right here, invalid conversion exception cannot convert single system single to string. So it just can't do it like this. So let's see how we can fix that. When I right click here and add unit, I can say to string. So again, intuitive. Even if you don't know the exact syntax, um, this is going to give it to you. And you can see that we have int to string. So this is your clue that, hey, if I have an int to string, maybe there's a float to string. So let me try float dot to string and you'll see that as I type this out I get the syntax and that's another thing I'm really liking about bold is if you're a new C sharp programmer you're not going to know all the commands and all the the API and different functions available and bold lets you kind of sift to I think it's 30,000 different um, actions and functions that are, are out there in the unity engine C sharp libraries so it's very powerful and all we have to do now is just rewire this so the money comes out of here into our two string and you can see that it went from being a value that you would type in to getting the input from our get variable and then we can take this and notice how the colors match we can take the orange to the orange here and just like that we're good now we can get rid of this update we don't uh, need updates, you should try to avoid updates. You, only when you need them should you have them. So we can get rid of that update. And what that update meant, uh, before I just completely get rid of it and don't say anything about it, is that update means that every frame that the game engine goes 
it's going to fire off that update. And we don't need that in this idle game. In fact, it's a good idea whenever possible not to put anything in update because it's going to be heavy because it's happening every frame. So here is our new flow diagram or our flow graph is we're getting our variable from money we're flowing it into this two string here and then once it's a string then we're putting it into the money text here and all of this is triggered by the start event and that's something that's kind of remarkable about Bolt is that we don't have to really think too much about the fact that in a traditional programming language we'd have to have a lot of structure maybe to, to write this out in the order would maybe be, you know, syntactically we'd have to figure it out. But this flow graph here, it knows when this start event comes in to here and to this node that it's automatically going to then propagate backwards and do every action that it needs to and run all the units that it needs to run in order to satisfy this input. So that's pretty slick. So let's watch what happens when we run it. And it doesn't seem like a big deal probably, but just like that we have our zero in there. If we wanted to start it out, you know, with more money, we can just change our game manager money here, our value over here in the right. Just change it, say, 100, because you might have a game that you buy the stores to start with. And we will later, in fact. And now when we run it, it's going to start at 100. So... We're going to end this lecture. We basically just did our very first flow graph. And in our next lecture, we're going to get so that when we click the button, it's going to actually add additional money and, and increment our uh, money variable here.